16 minutes into the program, welcome back. This year's World Press Photo Award in the category of long-term projects has been won by Valery Melnikov from Russia's Sputnik News Agency. His work, titled Black Days of Ukraine, shows the lives of people in the country's east living through the horrors of war. Valery spoke to RT about his work. I began working in the southeast of Ukraine at the beginning of summer 2014, when there was a full-scale military action there. Having spent some time there, I understood the conflict was unfortunately not coming to an end and that it was a huge story. I wanted to show the full scale of the tragedy, the people, the civilians which were dragged into the catastrophe. Because the scenes I saw with my own eyes were terrible moments in the lives of people in Donbass. Do you think there's been little media attention? When it all began, there were many journalists, many articles, reports, but after a year, it seemed like everyone had just forgotten. There was even the term, the forgotten war. Is it difficult for you to follow the unspoken rule, not to intervene? There's obviously a place for compassion and empathy, but I also had to keep in mind my goal as a photojournalist as to take photos and use photojournalism to tell the stories. But there are obviously situations when my help, as a human, not as a photojournalist, is needed, and obviously I did. <laughs> <laughs> Once I found out there was an airstrike near Lugansk, and I decided to go there. In 30 minutes, I was already at the scene of the tragedy. That was probably the toughest moment in the lives of those people, and in my work too. I saw destroyed streets, houses on fire, dead people, or those who were crying for their relatives who had been killed. And I've got a personal question for you. Aren't you afraid to go to such places? They can be really dangerous. Yes, at some point they are very. So are you afraid? Yes, of course. The U.S.-backed Iraqi armed forces have looted and destroyed a number of villages during their offensive to retake the city of Mosul from Islamic State. That is according to a damning report released by Human Rights Watch. Now, these are satellite images provided by the organization, showing a village located to the southwest of Mosul before and after it was captured from ISIL by Iraqi forces. Human Rights Watch says hundreds of homes have been destroyed and set ablaze using explosives and heavy machinery. Our research demonstrates that armed forces, Iraqi armed forces that is fighting ISIS uh, to retake uh, a couple of villages and uh, a small town near Mosul, uh, they looted, damaged and destroyed homes. Uh, and that was apparently with no military uh, necessity for those demolitions, which means that these uh, acts amount to war crimes. They said that many of these homes have been uh, booby-trapped. Why this is not convincing is it's because because, um, you know, burning houses and destroying houses with heavy machinery is really not the appropriate mechanism to defuse improvised uh, detonative devices, because uh, such actions are just likely to detonate the devices, and that's obviously not, not the, that should be the purpose. What we are asking the Iraqi authorities to do is to open investigations and to hold those responsible into account. Also, United States and other countries providing military assistance to the Iraqi government, uh, they should press for investigation. Well, fears are mounting that Mosul, once home to around 2 million people, will be completely destroyed and abandoned by the time it's been wrestled back from Islamic State. The east of the city has already suffered heavy damage, while the operation to retake the western side is yet to come. A U.S. commander has already warned that the fight for the west of Mosul will be a tough one. Washington has provided air and ground support for Iraqis trying to drive ISIL from the city, which was captured by the extremists in 2014. The offensive was paused last month after a number of eastern districts were captured, but operations have taken a heavy toll on civilians.
The trends that we're seeing are deeply disturbing. Already there are many families that are in trouble and the fighting hasn't even started. 400,000 civilians are estimated to be in the old city on the western side of the river where the fighting is just about to start. Now we're very concerned about the civilians there because the old city is highly populated, it's densely packed. You know, we know that there are a lot of civilians there and they could end up being under siege-like conditions for weeks or for months. They're going to be highly vulnerable. We hope that in the west, civilians are protected by all of the parties to the conflict. Tony Blair, Britain's controversial former Prime Minister, is in the headlines once again, calling on the public to rise up against Brexit. He says people weren't aware of the full consequences of what they were voting for. I accept right now there is no widespread appetite to rethink. But the people voted without knowledge of the terms of Brexit. As these terms become clear, it is their right to change their mind. Our mission is to persuade them to do so. This is not the time for retreat, indifference or despair, but the time to rise up in defense of what we believe. But whether anyone's going to listen to him could be a moot point. A recent poll found 74% of the British public had an unfavorable view of the former leader, taking that he led the country into the notorious Iraq war, which many believe was illegal. We spoke to several experts who believe Blair won't get much support for his plea. I'm sickened and disgusted by this intervention. I was elected on the same day in 1983 as this gentleman. He had no regard for democracy when he was a member of parliament. And now he's left the House of Commons. He's actually stirring people up who lost the referendum to rise up and behave in an anti-democratic way. And this is the man who told us a pack of lies about the war with Iraq. I'm absolutely sickened by what he's done he should hold his head in shame well i mean tony blair's a discredited uh, politician in this country he's a hate figure for many people uh, and it's it's quite incredulous listening to him this morning asking people to rise up against a democratic vote taken by the people and to say that the people didn't know what they was voting for is basically calling the british people stupid uh, you know, I don't think this will go down very well with the British public at all. Many of the people I speak to are veterans of that, uh, of that first Gulf War. People that have been damaged mentally, people that have been damaged physically, is a hate figure. They don't like the guy. Uh, they will not listen to him. Though in Scotland, it appears people are more prepared to take action as the UK heads towards Brexit. Scotland's former First Minister, Alex Salmon, told RT UK that his country would be best placed to hold a new independence referendum within the next two years. The best date for a, a second referendum would be within the negotiating period of two years. Now that's going to start next month. Uh, that period could be extended, of course, depending on, on the negotiations, but you would say that you would want to be in a position to have a, a referendum where Scotland can have continuous uh, membership, not just the European Union, but certainly of the the single marketplace, uh, and that would be the situation. Of course, all of this depends on uh, Theresa May as Prime Minister breaking her word, uh, not having the agreed UK position which she promised Scotland last July, uh, and refusing to accept Nicola Sturgeon's compromise proposal, which is to keep Scotland within the European economic area, even if they're taking the rest of the UK out of it. So the ball is very much in the Prime Minister's court. Uh, well, in the elections of last uh, of uh, 2016, Nicola Sturgeon was re-elected on a manifesto commitment that if Scotland was dragged out of Europe against the will of the Scottish people, uh, then the Scottish Parliament should have the right to hold another Scottish referendum. So in contrast to the Tory party, online or offline, the SNP and Alex Salmond accept the verdict of the Scottish people. That's a distinguishing mark of, uh, of our politics.
Well, that's our news for now. Next here on RT, Going Underground looks into why Trump is tweeting against the National Security Agency. And if you're watching from the UK or Ireland, the French presidential election race amidst massive riots. That's in Sputnik.